بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم البرزنتيشن هذا حيكون ان شاء الله عن الكواليتي داتا فور كوفيد 19 حنتكلم فيه عن السرفيلنس سيستم عن الداتا فور انفلونزا وحنتكلم فيه شوي على الكودينج في البدايه ارحب فيكم واعطيكم احب اشكركم على على وقتكم وعلى حضوركم واحب اشكر هيئه التخصصات الصحيه طيب الان فول سكرين اكدوا لي اذا فيها اذا فيها الشاشه تمام بالنسبه لكم طيب احب اشكر هيئه التخصصات الصحيه على اتاحه الفرصه هذه واحب اشكر زملائي بجامعه جيزان وزملائي طبعا في جمعيه اداره المعلومات الصحيه معكم عبد الرحمن الجعبور استاذ مساعد بقسم المعلوماتيه الصحيه المحاضره هذه باذن الله حتتكلم عن جزء ان جزء الاول مثل ما قلت لكم على الداتا كواليتي بالنسبه للانفلونزا وفي الجزء الثاني من المحاضرة حيكون معانا الأستاذ ناصر زميلنا في الجمعية في جمعية إدارة المعلومات الصحية حيعطيكم براكتيكال ستيبز أو جايد لاين أو خطوات كيف أنكم تسوون الكودينج بالنسبة للكوفيد 19. الأوت لاين زي ما قلنا حنعطيكم بعض الـ البرزنتيشن هذا بعض أنواع السرفيلنس وإيش فائدة السرفيلنس بالنسبة للإنفلونزا وخصائصها ميزات العيوب في أنواع السرفيلنس وبعدين بعطيكم أهمية الانفورماتكس أو الاتش اي ام بالسرفيلينس وكيف إنه ممكن we contribute to high quality data طيب إيش معنات السرفيلينس خلينا نأخذ تعريف السرفيلينس بالنسبة للبابليك هيلث نقول لك البابليك هيلث سرفيلينس it's ongoing systematic collection and analysis of interpretation of data لما نشوف التعريف التعريف لما يقول لك ongoing و systematic هذه معناتها أنها continuous يعني ما هي بشرط على ال في وقت الايفنت او وقت البانديميك وكمان تجيك المراحل الثانيه اللي هي بعد الكوليكشن عندنا الاناليسز وعندنا الانتربريتيشن فهي زي ما تقول تاخذ السايكل الكامله للداتا لاي لاي داتا الداتا عاده تمر بالمراحل هذه اللي هي الجمع والتحليل والانتربريتيشن واللي ياخذون اكشن على الانتربريتيشن فهذه تقريبا نفس السايكل ولكن فوكست على على الهيلث او على الديزيز آه بالنسبه للسرفيلنس السرفيلنس عاده بنلفظ انواع كثير بالسرفيلنس في آه الليبراتوري يركزون على الكونفرميشن عندكم بعض السرفيلنس تكون من الـ من الاي ار او الامرجنس روم آه عفوا اعتذر منكم يبدو لي ان المتحدثين في جزء كبير منهم ما, ما يتكلمون عربي فبحاول اني بعطيها انجليزي وعربي مع بعض عشان عشان اخواننا اللي ما يتكلمون عربي آه اوكي سوري فور نان an Arabic speaker. I start in Arabic. Uh, so uh, to introduce myself again, my name is Abdurrahman Jabour. I'm an assistant professor in health informatics at Jazan University. I'm also the chairman of scientific committee at the Saudi Health Information Management Association, Shima. And this talk will be about the surveillance. We will discuss the surveillance type for influenza and the and the reason for uh, doing the surveillance and how do you can how can we achieve high quality data for uh, for influenza surveillance. Uh, so why do we need surveillance? We need it to detect the activity, activity in terms of both the time and the location. Uh, both the time and the location. Uh, if you just allow me, I'll put the full screen. I'll the full screen because I have the presenter mode. Okay. To detect the activity of influenza, when we say activity, we include both the geographical location and also the temporal aspect of the data, which is the time. We need to understand that the activity in terms of demographic, any individual variation or any demographic variation or site variation, the type and the subtype of the pathogen or the circulating virus, any unusual events, any unusual activity uh, in the community. Uh, we can also determine the severity of the virus uh, all this information we collected to help us um, intervene when necessary. Uh, so when, when we said about this, the activity, uh, one, of the more, one of the very important aspect of activity is the seasonality. We know that influenza have different season. They come and go, or they peak in a part of the years. Uh, so on the screen, we see two different examples. This is example from, from a research I'm currently working on. And the one on the left, uh, if you can see, this is the typical uh, 
the typical influenza pattern you would expect most of the time, they peak around the end of the year, uh, somewhere around November. This is the winter season. And this is the one from the data we collected. It's, it's a tropical area and it's very common for tropical region to have less defined peaks or less defined seasonality. So it's very important to, to know what to expect every year and to know the pattern and to know how, how the demographic and the geographical variation in, in your community. So what we can do if we know this information, we establish a baseline, we know what's coming ahead of time. And if there's something unusual, if there's any peaks, any trend, any, any volume that unexpected, we can interfere uh, in, in a timely manner. Uh, there are different types of surveillance. Uh, they vary based on the level of coverage and the type of data collected. And, and each, each type has its advantage and disadvantage. Each type can be used for different purposes or certain purposes. Some of them are nationwide. Uh, some of them are sentinel. Sentinel, when we mean we take uh, from a specific location. Uh, some of them at the country level or the local level. Uh, we'll go through the types and details in the next few slides. But before we go to the types, let's try to understand the influenza, how it's happened, how it starts, how it's end. And by understanding the, the, the steps or the phases that influenza go through, we will understand what data are normally can be collected at each phase and what can we do, uh, how we can intervene and how this data can be helpful. Okay, uh, I think the screen is not full screen. Let me do this. So uh, at the beginning, let me, let me put on full screen again. Is it on full screen right now? Um, Uh, full screen or Light show. full screen. Uh, so, uh, the patient when when the patient first encounter the uh, the influenza, uh, they begin with the exposure, the exposure to the virus, and then there is an incubation period, incubation period after after the exposure in which the symptoms start to start to to, to begin to manifest. Uh, once the systems start to manifest, they go to seek the health uh, care provider. Uh, after they seek the health care providers. Mm, yeah. Okay, after they seek the healthcare providers, then this is called the first encounter at the hospital. So the first encounter is the time where, where the hospital have the, have the ability to start documenting data. Anything before that, before the symptoms start to manifest, patients are, are very unlikely they will be visiting the hospital. So we wouldn't know much about them. And after they visit the healthcare encounter, then we, the type of information we get at the time, it's the chief compliance, normally the, the sign and symptoms. Uh, once the patient referred to the laboratory, we wait for the diagnosis to come or the confirmation to come from the laboratory. And then we start collecting the laboratory data. So knowing these faces, we know which information can, can we get and how we can utilize those information. Uh, if we if we if we want to discuss the level of coverage, so basically not every influenza patient will visit the hospital. Many of them will not visit if, if the symptoms are mild. Um, and those patients who visit the hospital, we're not sure if all of them will be reported, uh, presumably, or they're supposed to be reported. But sometimes there is an issue with the data, and it happens in many places. So any deficiency with the data reporting system, those patient will be will, will not be shown in the system will not be reported and if the sign and symptoms are taken this is the information will be reported 
uh, many of the influenza patients, especially those with mild, and not during the uh, pandemic, during the regular season, the physician, the first thing they'll tell, especially in primary care, he will tell them like, if, if how long this this symptom had been with you, and if the patient feel fine, he'll tell them like, you're giving like painkiller or something, he'll tell them it's more likely to be a virus. Take a few days and come back if it doesn't go away. So at this stage, laboratory, laboratory tests will not be taken and there will be no laboratory information. Uh, so the patient who are likely to have a confirmed diagnosis is a subset of the influenza patient. It's not the whole, the whole coverage. Assalamu uh, alaikum, Dr. Abdul Rahman. Badal habib alaikum, salam. Aadurni, Wissam Abu Znada, kif halakum tayyibun, insha'Allah. Badal habib alaikum, fik. فضلنا امر ممكن بس تقفل الباوربوينت وتشغله مره ثانيه عشان في ايشو في السكرين الله يكرمك وخليك ابشر حبيبي اقفله كومبليتلي؟ يس وتفتحه مره ثانيه معلش سامحنا تعبنا حياك الله حياك الله حبيبي الف شكر طيب طيب الان كيف بالله اكد لي بالله اذا ظاهر معك الفول سكرين ولا ولا لسه في مشكله آه. لو سمحت الان السكرين واضح معكم كامل ولا ممكن ممكن تضغط سواب ديسبلايز دكتور سواب ديسبلايز ديسبلايز فقط جنب التب طيب الان كيف؟ كورونا طيبه الان شكرا طيب ممتاز الله طيب. يحفظك طيب uh, so we talk about the type of surveillance uh, we can't address all the type in this limited time but we will talk about the two major uh, subtypes. There is the sentinel surveillance and this is the syndromic surveillance. Central surveillance is normally a specific geographical location uh, selected for collecting laboratory samples and the, pu the purpose of this is to collect the pathogen and to know the virus type circulating in the community. Uh, so this is give us more like accurate detailed information but the coverage is much lower than the other one which is the syndromic surveillance. Syndromic surveillance and the other type they focus on the sign and symptoms. And within the syndromic surveillance, we have the ILI and the SARI. And the difference between them is the ILI is more for outpatient and the other one for inpatient. So, uh, so, so why we have different types? They, they give us different information. So as we stated before, uh, the laboratory confirmation is more accurate uh, but in time it have less coverage and given the, the, given the fact that we have to wait for the laboratory confirmation, this is going to be slower. The, the, the time we have to wait from, from, from the sampling collection to the confirmation of the lab to sending the information, that will take time. And you know, with, with, with something infectious like influenza in general, the time is very critical aspect. So there is always a trade-off, trade-off between the time and the completeness or the level of depth or details of information we can collect. There's also a trade-off in the quality of data and the level of coverage. We cannot collect laboratory confirmed information for all patients, especially in, an, in, a, regular, in a regular season when there is no pandemic in the area. So uh, it's gonna be very labor intensive and very costly. So we trade off the coverage the level of coverage or, or the, the completeness of data with the quality of data. Uh, so normally by understanding the limitation of each type of surveillance, we can, we can tell which information each surveillance can provide and how can we utilize this information. Uh, so we discussed these two major types. Uh, this is the case definition for those two types. Normally they are very similar, uh, but the second one, which is the SERI or the respiratory infectious, they focus on the hospitalization patient. So it's more about the inpatient and opposed to the ILI, which is more for the outpatient. Uh, so if we talk about the 
influenza like, like illnesses, uh, they act as an early warning signal. They tell us if there is unexpected uh, activities in the region, if there is volume, unexpected, if, if things start to peak in a different time, if they manifested in a different time than every, every other year, which, which we established during the baseline collection. Uh, so we talk about the time issue, we talk about the situational awareness, which is acting as, as let's say, as a, a whistleblower. We can't really tell what's going on, but it tells us uh, something needs further investigation. It helps us to prepare to investigate further, uh, to utilize our resources effectively. If there's any allocation of resources needed, now we see how allocation of resources is being discussed everywhere in the world for the uh, for the respiratory equipment, for the mask, and even for the healthcare providers. Uh, so we talk about the surveillance. Surveillance is is is, is shared with with many different healthcare professions, like the physician are involved, the epidemiologist involved, the public health are involved, uh, even the health informatics. So, but what I would really like the health informatics and the health information management professional to know is how the coding and the data collection at the hospital level can contribute or can help and revolutionize the, uh, the surveillance system, whether it's for influenza or any other uh, surveillance system. Uh, some of the things that have been discussed and it's have been also applied in other surveillance type like the cancer, it's what they call it the real-time learning system. Real-time learning system is where they leverage the power of electronic health record and the power of coded data uh, to get an instant notification, to get this process of data collection automated. So instead of having a separate system for reporting, that's not really collect, connected to the hospital database or the coded data. No, we can merge them together. We can automate many of the process we normally do. So it have, it have the advantage of giving better coverage. It have the advantage of giving uh, some sort of accuracy. Because normally, as, as you know, if the data is collected by multiple people, like everyone is copying from, from different sources of data, there will be more, more, this will be more prone to human error, like as, as from copying to the, from the medical chart, medical record into, into the reporting system. But once we have this data seemingly reported, it's less likely to have these issues. Uh, but to do this, we have to work in, in several things. Uh, the, the, the HIE, the HIE, which the government is working on right now, which the many HR system being implemented in the region, this is a very good infrastructure facilitator and will set, set the stage for, for this to be, to be, to be achieved. Uh, the other advantage I think the Saudi system is having is unique ID or the unique medical record. We use the national ID now. Uh, now this is a unique identifier we can leverage. Many many systems around the world uh, they don't have a unique ID that can be used in healthcare, like in US for example. The social security number is made for uh, billing purposes, not billing purposes, but for financial purposes, for the credit. So they can't use it for healthcare system even the. Even the patient, when they when they present to the healthcare facilities, many of them just don't share the don't share their social security because because they're not obligated to. Uh, so so to overcome these issues, they use what is known as probability matching. They try to use the name, the date of birth, the address, phone number, to reach some sort of, some level of confidence to say, okay, now we're since three of the four variables are pretty much match, or since we have this level of matching, we are confident that this is the same individual. But for us, we should, we should be able to have a definite matching. Uh, so for the, for the learning system, I think there's a lot of uh, case studies and a lot of examples we can learn, we can learn from. Uh, many of the examples have been, have been developed in the cancer registries. And the reason is that cancer registries have a lot of things to, yet to be discovered. Uh, the type of patient response, how patients respond to treatment, the survivorship. Uh, this, is, this is some of the aspects that they need to learn about their patient, this personal variation. And I think that's have a lot of potential in influenza as well, because we see with COVID-19, 
some, pa some patients are asymptomatic, some, pa some patients may die from it. Uh, so the symptoms and the severity and the response are not the same. Uh, we, we still learn about the virus. We are we out to learn more and enable, in order for us to learn about it, we need some data, data that we can collect and study retrospectively and we can inform our knowledge about this virus. Uh, so we, we, we I, I would encourage my colleagues in the informatics and the HIM not to think about the data we collect as just to be reported and announced and to know the epidemiological uh, trend or figures, but to think about this data can be used years and years after collection. Currently, anyone in research will tell you that we are still collecting data retrospectively, like 10 years uh, cohort of data. So th this data that we are collecting, that our friends, the coders are collecting, Will have a lot of will have a lot of value in future, and the value will last for a very very long time. Uh, what the informatics and the HIM can do, we talk about the coding, we talk about the data quality. We'll talk more about the data quality in the uh, the next few in the next slide. The workflow, uh, how to set up a, a workflow that will minimize the effort in the coding, and minimize the effort in the healthcare professional to make this process as automated and as accurate as possibly. Uh, the system integration, the infrastructure, also the analytics. We saw a lot of dashboard and, and, uh, and, and sites and portal that can give us instant information that update in an hour by hour basis or in, even by the minute. As, as soon as the, the data arrive, they can automate it and they can visualize it. This is one of the things that we can utilize in the informatics. Uh, to just to have, before we finish, to highlight briefly the difference between the, the structure uh, information that entered through the, through the reporting system and the coding system. The coding system have some granular, more detailed data, but it's also need to be dealt with differently. This is example of the case definition that they are collecting about the influenza and they, they try to to compare the sensitivity and specificity of different case definition for the same cohort. And we can see the difference if we look at the last one, which is the fourth one from here. We can, we can see how the sensitivity and specificity are, or the positive predictive value are much higher than the others. And, and there is always a trade-off, um, or, or most of the time, I wouldn't say always, but it's very common to see a trade-off between the sensitivity and specificity. So we can, we can think about the purpose, why we're collecting the data, how we're gonna utilize it. And then we, we set up our system accordingly. Uh, as for the coding and the clinical documentation as well. So this is not only for the HIM and the coder, but also for physician who document the clinical mode. Uh, we can't emphasize enough the importance of the complete chart, complete medical record and the complete coding because this is very important for learning about the virus and the other virus, the accuracy of information and the timeliness and how soon they put up or send up this information after, after the encounter. Uh, what we are, the total, so we're not, we're, when we study the COVID-19, we, we don't only study the patient infected with the COVID-19, but we also need some time to compare them with the denominator, the patients who are healthy. Uh, the, 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 uh, the community or the, their peers, like we have to do like benchmarking and control groups sometime. So the, so the data quality is not for the, for the COVID-19, but it has to be something to think of for, for patients and for record, for coding in general. Uh, before we finish, I would like to, to thank you again uh, for this opportunity. And I'd like to remind my friends who, or, or the audience who might be interested in the coding and the HIM activity or the health information management to, to follow us at the, at the Shima social media. And we also, um, our, our, our colleagues, uh, thankfully at the Saudi Health Information Management, they, they launch a very, very generous and kind initiative. They, they provide inquiries for coding. So if you, if you have any questions, any inquiries about the coding, any question you may come across, you can, you can contact us as this email and we will try our best to help you. Uh, before, before I end, I will leave you with my friend, uh, Mr. Nasr al-Bluwi. Nasr al-Bluwi is a coding trainer and he's very expert in coding. 
and he will he will guide you through details tip and how to code uh, COVID-19 appropriately and we'll give you also a case studies inshallah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Abdurrahman. It was a very interesting uh, lecture about surveillance and how to collect the data. Uh, can you all hear me clearly? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Can you see the whole screen? Uh, yes, Nasser, it's clear. Okay. Uh, first thing I want to know is I want to know myself. I'm Nasser Blouy. I'm a clinical coder and trainer. I'm a member of the Society of Saudi Arabia for Health and Health, SHIMA. طبعا موضوعنا اليوم راح يكون عن الكوفيد 19 راح نتكلم عن الكودينج والدوكيومنتيشن طبعا بالنسبه للتصويت كان التصويت اغلب على انه نتكلم بالعربي اكثر ولكن في ناس كمان صوتت انها تتكلم بالانجلش فانا راح احاول اكون اقدم ميكس ما بين العربي والانجلش لانه احنا طبعا ككودرز او كداتا كوليكترز او كسرفيلنج وي نيد تو نو انجلش Of course, and we need to know the medical the medical terms. فراح تكون محاضرة مكس بين العربي والإنجليش إذا هذا يريحكم. وإن شاء الله راح أكون راح نقدم لكم كيف الكوديك كيف الكوفيد 19 كيف يتم ترميز الكوفيد 19 وكيف كمان كان نقدر نحاول نحسن الداتا أو الدوكيومنتيشن of كوفيد 19 بناء على احتياجات الكودرز. Uh, so we'll have a quick overview about coronavirus. I think uh, we all now know about coronavirus. It's, it has been a global pandemic and everyone knows about it. And everybody is uh, seeing the news and watching the news every day. And uh, so we'll have a quick overview. So coronavirus, it's a large family of viruses that causes illness ranging from common cold to severe, severe acute respiratory syndromes. Uh, طبعا الكورونا فيروس كان هو طبعا عائله كبيره من من الفيروسات تسمى فيروس كورونا او الفيروسات التاجيه حاليا الكوفيد 19 او الكورونا فيروس 2019 مثل ما سموه كوفيد 19 هذا الاسم العلمي له هذا فيروس جديد من strain new strain from the same old virus from يعني من نفس الفاميلي حق الكورونا فيروس طبعا الفيروس بدا من الصين زي ما كلنا عارفين from Wuhan in China. The virus has an incubation period طبعا incubation period اللي هي فترة الحضانة. The incubation period is within 14 days but for most cases it occurs after five or four days. Common signs of COVID-19 that includes respiratory symptoms like cough and fever and shortness of breath. Okay. And in severe cases, it, it can cause pneumonia and severe respiratory death uh, syndrome and sometimes death. Uh, how COVID-19 can be transmitted? I think you're all familiar with that. It's transmissible via uh, droplets or saliva. The virus is on the way to the blood or the blood that is on the way to the blood. And it is on the way to the blood. 
عشان كده احنا دائما نحاول انه we keep social distance and wash our hands uh, most often. Uh, who's at risk? Of course, we are all at risk of COVID-19, as we see the numbers are going higher every day. Okay, but most people infected with COVID-19 virus will experience mild to moderate sim symptoms. So uh, normal people will just, it will be like just a normal flu. For other people and older people and other who have chronic uh, conditions like cardiovascular conditions and diabetes or, or hypertension, they will develop serious illness. So they are, they are the most people at risk. Uh, COVID-19 deaths, of course COVID-19 has become a global pandemic and has already resulted in millions of infections and more than hundreds of thousands of deaths. And as we can see here in the diagram, uh, the COVID-19 death rate is by age. So we can see that the highest range or the highest rate is for people above 80 and then people from 70 to uh, 79. So the more uh, the people are old, the more they are in, at risk of uh, death of COVID-19. Now we will talk about our major, our major subject today, which is the classification of ICD-10. Of course, as we are in Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has implemented the international classification of disease, ICD-10 AM 10th edition, which has been uh, recently replacement uh, of the previously used sixth edition. طبعا المملكة كانت ماشية لفترة طويلة على ICD 10 AM sixth edition. الحين صار في تحول على tenth edition لأنه هو الإصدار الأحدث. طبعا بالنسبة للclassification or as for the classifications, uh, there are updates for every classification. There are something called coding rules. There are something called uh, uh, new classifications for the for diseases, especially when it's uh, when it's pandemic like COVID-19. So WHO and IBA, which is uh, and Shima, Shima is the Saudi Health Information Management Associations. Uh, they are they released updates uh, and instructions on how to code COVID-19. I think you could find it on Twitter, and you will find it uh, on IBA website and WHO website. Uh, today, we will cover these instructions and we will cover these updates in depth because it was just uh, uh, it was uh, just a short shortcut how to code COVID-19. But as we know, coding is uh, a standardized process, but it d it's different from person to person, depends on the scenario and depends on the case study. So in this webinar, we will go in depth with the case studies and try to see how we code the COVID-19 patient in every situation. So it's important for us to know as the coders, uh, we should have the medical knowledge. We, have, we, should have know, we should know the pathophysiology of diseases. What are the signs and symptoms and what's the treatment for the disease and what uh, definitions we should know about the disease. So we will have a quick, uh, a quick review about COVID-19 signs and symptoms and definitions. So COVID-19 signs and symptoms, as I think more of you, most of you are aware of the signs and symptoms, which are fever, cough, shortness of breath, sore throat, and headache. For most people, as we said, they will have respiratory disease or respiratory symptoms, okay? Most people will be infected and develop mild to moderate symptoms. Other people who have chronic conditions, and we said over 60 years, will, will have severe and uh, chronic illness. So the common signs and symptoms are fever, tiredness, dry, dry cough, and other symptoms include shortness of breath, ache and pains, sore throat. So it's basically the same symptoms and signs for influenza, for uh, most uh, respiratory diseases like bronchitis, pneumonia, uh, now we will talk about definitions. What does it mean to have a patient with suspected COVID-19? Okay, so suspected COVID-19, it has a criteria. The individuals are suspected to have COVID-19 if they have one of the criteria described below. Uh, first of all, he, he could be acute respiratory illness. Acute respiratory illness, okay. Uh, 
عنده أعراض مثلاً زي الكف shortness of breath and other etiology that fully explain uh, the clinical presentation. طبعاً المريض ما يكون عنده أي أي etiology أو أي مسبب يكون هو مسبب لهذا ال respiratory illness except for COVID-19. Okay. كمان ممكن يكون عنده history of travel to a country that has reported infection. يعني ممكن يكون جاي مثلاً من دولة الدول هذه فيها infections أو فيها طبعاً حالياً كل الدول فيها infections. Uh, الكريتيريا الثانية إنه ممكن يكون acute respiratory illness كان عنده أو has been contacted with confirmed probable cases or probable cases of COVID-19. ممكن يكون المريض كان مع acute respiratory illness وكمان عنده uh, contact with someone who has the virus يعني كان عنده uh, تواصل مع شخص كان عنده الفيروس خلال ال 14 يوم اللي قبل السنتر. Another criteria that uh, severe acute, acute respiratory infection and who requires hospitalization. يكون مريض عنده acute respiratory infection ويحتاج تنويه. ففي الوقت اللي احنا فيه هذا اتوقع انه اي مريض يكون معاه respiratory infection بياخذ ال extra care يعني ممكن يكون فعلا suspected COVID-19. ايش يصير بعد ما كان المريض suspected COVID-19؟ A suspected COVID-19 will rather receive confirmation of the diagnosis or it will be ruled out. طبعا المريض ممكن يكون بعدين confirmed by lab investigations or clinical diagnosis او او ممكن يكون ruled out اذا كان طلعت النتيجة نيجاتيف. حاليا رح نتكلم عن laboratory confirmed COVID-19 طبعا laboratory confirmed COVID-19 اللي هو كيف يكون المريض positive وهذا كان الاثبات عندنا انه هذا المريض كان كوفيد 19. في حاله اخرى انه يكون كلينيكالي دايجنوزد او بروبابل كوفيد 19 انه ممكن يكون الطبيب الطبيب هو اللي شخص الحاله ككوفيد 19 لكن بدون لابوراتوري ايفيدنس. او ممكن الطبيب يكون كاتب انها بروبابل كوفيد 19 او سسبكتد كوفيد 19 وما في لابوراتوري ايفيدنس. احيانا اللابوراتوري ايفيدنس ما يكون موجود لانه مثلا ممكن تكون الموارد في نفس المستشفى ضعيفه او يكون في مثلا مشكله في نفس التحاليل. أو أو في هذه الحالة نسميه clinical diagnosed أو probable COVID-19 الحالة الثالثة أو الأخيرة اللي هي ruled out COVID-19 إذا كانت التحاليل نيجاتيف طبعا راح نتكلم في كل حالة من هذه كيف نقدر نكاود مريض الكوفيد 19 حال كان laboratory confirmed أو clinical diagnosed أو ruled out uh, Of course as we said WHO and IBA IBA, which is an independent hospital pricing authority of Australia. So as we are classifying our coding as Australian modification, so we can get the advice from IBA according to the WHO. Uh, so the WHO ha has advised new codes. There is something from the 6th edition, but it is in a very small way, the emergency code. The emergency codes هذه للأمراض اللي فجأة تصير مثلاً بانديميك أو نحاول إن إحنا نكون كيف نقدر نبلغ عن هذه الأمراض بشكل سريع أو بأكواد محددة. كانت موجودة في 6 إديشن لكن كان فقط كود واحد لكن في 10 إديشن صارت الأكواد أكثر. طبعاً الـ WHO أعلنت إنه في أكواد emergency codes to COVID-19. We have three codes. The first emergency code is U07.1. This code will be used or assigned when there is a documentation of a confirmed lab test. So, any مريض راح يكون عنده confirmed lab test, test or positive lab test, راح نكود code, code إضافي اللي هو U07.1. U07.2, this is an emergency use for people who are clinically diagnosed or patients who are clinically diagnosed, okay, or probable, but there is no uh, lab evidence. or without lab evidence. The الحالة الأولى راح تكون U07.1 هذول الناس اللي عندهم laboratory evidence أو الناس اللي أثبتوا إنه معهم كورونا من التحاليل. الحالة الثانية اللي هي U07.2 هذه للناس اللي الطبيب شخص الحالة ككوفيد 19 أو كانت probable أو suspected. والحالة الثالثة U07 U06.0 these are for the ruled out cases which are the lab results became negative. طبعا الحالة الثالثة إذا كانت التحاليل كلها نيجاتيف راح نستخدم هذا الكود ككود إضافي U06.0 
uh, IHPA IBA published the coding rule, a coding rule uh, especially for COVID-19. It was published on 7th of February and it's updated uh, and it's effective from 1st of January. And that's why we will discuss this rule and take it one by one. So now finally to the COVID-19 coding. So please, uh, for coders, please pay attention to the next, the next slide. And if you wanna have screenshots for the case studies, please do so. Uh, so as we all know, coding is a standardized process, but it's valuable for, to different scenarios. As we said, ممكن يكون المريض شخصين يكون عندهم نفس المرض لكن كل شخص منهم يتكون بطريقة مختلفة. بناء على السيناريو، بناء على ال history وال case study حق المريض. So in the next slides, we will go through the classification, providing examples for most common scenarios. COVID-19 depends on whether it was suspected or confirmed, or whether the patient contact, contacted an infection, an infected individual or patient state. طبعاً مثل ما تكلمنا إنه الكودينج حق الكوفيد 19 يعتمد على هل الكوفيد 19 هذا suspected أو مشكوك فيه أو confirmed. أو إذا كانت مثلاً المريض هذا كان عنده كونتاكت لشخص مع كوفيد 19 أو طبعاً على حسب الحالة حقة البيشنت زي مثلاً pregnant pregnant lady will be coding differently than other uh, than other cases. Uh, now we will have a quick notes about uh, كوفيد 19 coding. كوفيد 19 complicating pregnancy طبعاً كلنا نعرف إنه pregnancy لازم تتكون بأكواد مختلفة غير ال المرضى العاديين او على الاقل لازم يكون في او كود للمرضى. Uh, as a principle diagnosis for confirmed and clinically diagnosed COVID-19, okay, we will use the code 098.5 as a principle diagnosis and then we will code other codes as per the ACS 1521 and ACS 1500. طبعا في حالات المريضه كانت حامل راح يكون الـ Principal Diagnosis A98.5 طبعا هذا للحالات اللي هي Confirmed and Clinically Diagnosed الحالات الـ Ruled Out ما راح نستخدم هذا الكود The other notes I want you to know is if the patient was transferred with suspected condition so the patient might be in a small hospital and transferred to another hospital with a suspected COVID-19 okay in this case Uh, meeting the criteria of suspected condition, ACS 0012, uh, we will not be assigning U07 or U07 or U06. If the patient was transferred from the hospital to another hospital with a diagnosis that was related to COVID-19, we will not use the code of U07 or U06. Because this code will be used eventually in the other hospital. The last note, of course, Uh, most of the coronavirus or the COVID-19 patient will require isolation, okay? So if the patient was isolated, we will need to add another code, which, was, uh, which is Z29.0, uh, isolation. Now we can start the classification, okay? Uh, we will start with the coding confirmed case. So as we said, confirmed case has two parts. Laboratory confirmation or clinically diagnosis. For the laboratory confirmed cases, okay, when there is a documentation, when there is a documentation of a lab result that's positive, so if the patient has symptoms, okay, we will assign the principal diagnosis as a symptom or the condition, okay. Of course, as per guidelines of the principal diagnosis standard, triple zero one. So this will be the principal diagnosis. An additional diagnosis of P97.2 for the coronavirus to identify the infectious agent, and U07.1, emergency use of, COVID, of U07.1. Of course, if the patient was pregnant, we will add uh, as a principal diagnosis O98.5, followed by this criteria. Okay. طبعا في حالة إذا كان المريض confirmed by lab results or the kind of married uh, and COVID-19 and the uh, lab results. Uh, the principal diagnosis is the signs of symptoms. The kind of married signs of symptoms. 
طبعا راح يكون الساينز والسيمتوم هي البرنسبل دايجنوزيس او الكونديشن في حاله اذا كانت الكونديشن معروفه فور اكزامبل نيمونيا وي ويل نوت كود ذا ساينز والسيمتوم اوكي راح يكون البرنسبل دايجنوزيس هو الكونديشن او اذا ما في كونديشن راح نكود السيمتوم Additional diagnosis will encode the B code or B97.2 to identify the infectious agent, and they may go on the code of the other half of the WHO, who will use 07.1. This is the case confirmed by lab. If the patient is sick, it will be different. It will be the principal diagnosis or code, and after that, the criteria will be the condition, and after that, the B code. Uh, we will have a case study for the previous uh, classification. Uh, so this patient was admitted with, with SOP, chest pain and fever. SOP, chest pain and fever. The patient was isolating, waiting for lab results. Uh, a chest X-ray was done and diagnosis of pneumonia was made. diagnosis of pneumonia or pneumonia. Lab investigations confirmed COVID-19, and the patient was treated conservatively for 10 days. طبعاً في هذه الحالة إذا رجعنا لل للclassification عندنا عندنا signs عندنا signs وعندنا condition. طبعاً إذا كانت ال condition هي المسؤولة عن the symptoms, we don't code the symptoms. We will code only the conditions. So the principal diagnosis will be the viral pneumonia, J12.8, and additional diagnosis of B97.2. For the coronavirus disease, and U07.1 as an emergency code, and of course we will code the isolation because the patient was isolated. Okay. The next case study is for the same patient. The same. What if the same patient was pregnant? Okay. So the same the same lady. She is a pregnant lady. Okay, with the same symptoms and signs, and same confirmation and also the same diagnosis. In this case, the coding will be a little different because the principal diagnosis will be the O code, O98.5, and the rest of codes will be the same. What about if a lab confirmed COVID-19 was documented without symptoms? ممكن يكون المريض أو المريض يكون ما عنده أعراض وكمان نكتشف إنه عنده كوفيد 19 ممكن يكون المريض مثلاً جاء سيلف بريزنتد أو مانديت سكريني ممكن يكون دخل عن طريق مثلاً الجهات المختصة أو الجهات الرقابية بحيث إنهم يسووا كشف عن الكوفيد 19 فهذه الحالة ممكن ما يكون عنده أعراض فكيف راح نكوفيد؟ If the patient had no symptoms and uh, it was laboratory confirmed that he had COVID-19. The principal diagnosis will be B code, B34.2. And uh, this is a different code than the other one because the other one was B97.2. Okay. So P34.2 as the principal diagnosis and additional diagnosis of a lab confirmation for the emergency use. Now we will discuss uh, two case studies. Case study three and four, they are they have the same coding but they are different. So for this the first case study, a patient with sim, without symptoms came to ED after contact with his friend three days ago, who was found to have COVID-19 lab. Lab result confirmed. Uh, lab result confirmed the patient uh, is infected and he was admitted for treatment. هذا patient طبعا ما كان عنده أعراض لكن جاء المستشفى لأنه تواصل مع شخص أو تواصل مع صديق اكتشف بعدين إنه عنده كوفيد 19. فكيف راح نكون هذه الحالة؟ الحالة الأخرى، a patient brought to by the authority of for screening who recently came from China. Lab results confirmed the patient had infected with كوفيد 19 and he was admitted. الحالة الأخرى، طبعاً الحالة الأولى هذه كانت self presented أو المريض جاب نفسه للمستشفى. الحالة الثانية ما المريض ما جاب نفسه للمستشفى لكن الجهات المختصة أو الجهات الرقابية هي اللي جابت على المستشفى. Uh, the coding will be the same because we discovered the COVID-19 by lab result, okay? So B34.2, coronavirus infection, and the U07.1 as a lab result. 
And note, there was no isolation code was used here because there was no documentation of isolation. So we cannot assume that if the patient is COVID-19, he will be isolated, it should be clearly documented. Uh, now, we will move on to cl coding clinically diagnosed or probable COVID-19. طبعا نتكلمنا عن الحالات المثبتة عن طريق اللاب نتكلمنا عن الحالات المثبتة عن طريق اللاب سواء كان عندها أعراض أو ما عندها أعراض الحين بنتكلم عن clinically diagnosed or probable إذا كان الطبيب هو اللي شخص الحالة وما عندنا إثبات عن طريق اللاب طبعا تقريبا الكودينج راح يكون نفسه لأنه في الأخير تم إثبات أن المريض هذا معاك كوفيد uh, 19 uh, وكمان عشان البروبابل كوفيد 19 طبعا في عندنا قاعده اللي هي سسبكتد ديزيز قاعده السسبكتد ديزيز في التنت اديشن اذا كان المريض بروبابل وي كود ات از اف ات واز دايجنوز فغالبا الكودينج ما راح يختلف كثير ما عدا اليو كود اليو كود طبعا هو اللي راح يختلف لان اليو كود في الاول يو كود كان يستخدم لللاب ريزلتس اليوكور الثاني راح يستخدم في الكلينيكال دايجنوز طبعا اذا كان المريض تنوم مع سيمتومز اف ذا بيشنت واز ادميتد وذ سيمتومز وي ويل كول ذا برنسبل دايجنوز اوف ذا سيمتومز اور كونديشنز از ذا بريفيوس ون ذا اديشنال دايجنوز ويل بي اولسو بي 97.2 اند ذا ديفرنس هير از يو 07.2 ذس از ا ديفرنت كود فروم ذا اذر ون بيكوز ذس از تو ايدنتيفاي A case documented as clinically diagnosed, not laboratory diagnosed, not laboratory confirmed. طبعا الكيس تاري غالبا راح تكون the same. In the coding I mean. This 28 years old patient was admitted with fever, 38 degrees and SOP. He mentioned that one of his family members was diagnosed with COVID-19 and in self-isolation period. Uh, lab results was inconclusive. A diagnosis of acute bronchitis due to COVID-19 was made. The patient was treated after and discharged after five days. طبعا هنا ما كان في laboratory confirmation لكن كان في diagnosis من الطبيب إنه هذا مريض عنده COVID-19. فراح يكون principal diagnosis كالعادة هو سبب دخول المريض اللي هو bronchitis. بعدها راح يجي الكودينج حق ال P97.2 وبعدين U07.2 اللي هو الامرجنسي يوز هو تقريبا الكودينج الكلينيكلي دايجنوز واللابوراتوري دايجنوز تقريبا اولموست ذا سيم الفرق الوحيد راح يكون في اليو كود سو انذر كيس ستدي ذيس كيس ستدي از امبورتنت بيكوز هير ات واز ترانسفيرد So a 20 years old patient was admitted to a small town hospital with a fever of 38 degrees and SOP. He mentioned that one of his family members was diagnosed with COVID-19 and in self-isolation period. Uh, result lab was inconclusive. He was transferred to the general hospital. Okay, so this is basically the same case as this one, but here he was transferred to the general hospital with a diagnosis of suspected acute bronchitis. If you remember, as we said, If the patient was transferred with suspected uh, COVID-19, we will not use the U code. So we will code it as J20.8, the bronchitis, and we will code the coronavirus, B97.2, and we will code the transfer on availability and inaccessibility of healthcare facilities, the 75.3. Note there was no use, no U, U, no U code was used here. Case study number seven, uh, no chronic condition also. The patient was admitted with no chronic condition, came to ER department with high fever and dry cough. He was admitted and isolated. Lab investigation were inconclusive and there was a diagnosis of probable COVID-19. So probable COVID-19 means suspected COVID-19. So here the patient had fever and cough and he didn't have condition that represents these symptoms. So the, we, now we will code the symptoms. So we will code the fever and cough and the B code and the U code for the emergency use and the isolation.
what if the, the patient had a probable COVID-19 without symptoms? So without symptoms means also self-presenting and mandated screening. In this case, also like the first one on, with the lab report, the lab confirmation, the B, co the B code will be P34.2 and we will have U07.2. So the only difference here is the U code. And as you can see, case, it's case eight and nine are, have the same coding. So here the patient came with, without symptoms, okay, after contact with his friend, so the same as the last one. There was no uh, lab, lab results that confirmed COVID-19, okay, but it was clinically diagnosed. But here, of course, there was no lab result confirming that the patient has COVID-19, but we didn't have any The first one was uh, a diagnosis of COVID-19, and the second one was we had a probable COVID-19, and both without symptoms. طبعا عشان عشان الوقت ما ياخذنا لانه انا اتوقع اني صرت اخذ وقت طويل في الكيس ستاديز فراح نحاول نمشي بسرعه حاولوا انه ممكن تصوروا الشاشه عشان تعرفوا كيف صرنا ناخذ هذا الكود. اوكي. سو ذا كودينج ويل بي بي 34.2 كورونا فيروس انفكشن اند يو 07.2 ايمرجنسي يوز اوف يو 07.2. اوكي. ناو وي ار دان وذ ذا clinically diagnosed and the laboratory confirmed. Now for the last part or the last, the last part of coding COVID-19, which is the rule out. How do we know coronavirus So what a suspected COVID-19 is documented with symptoms, but ruled out, we will assign the principal diagnosis to the symptom or the condition and we will have to add an additional diagnosis of Z03.8, observation for other suspected disease, and Z03.71 for neonatal. And we will add also your emergency use of U06.0. This is the third code for emergency use. This is for the rolled out cases or for the lab uh, results negative. Uh, observation or suspected uh, observation for suspected condition القاعده غالبا تقول انه اذا كان المريض دخل عشان observation وحصلنا symptoms او حصلنا condition ما نكود الكود اللي هو z03.8 او اي كود من z03 لكن uh, هنا صار في exception للكوفيد 19 الاكسبشن هذا كان المفروض انه يطبق من 1st of January انه في حالات الكوفيد 19 اذا كانت ruled out we will, we will also use the Z code, Z03.8. So this is an exception to the code. In this case, we will encode the conditions and we will encode Z03.8. Case study number 10. A patient came to hospital with cough, fever, and shortness of breath. He was recently in contact with a friend who was diagnosed with COVID-19. So it was suspected that he was infected. A diagnosis of pneumonia was made and he was isolated until his lab investigations came back negative. He was treated with antibiotics and discharged home after three days. طبعاً هنا المريض كان مشكوك إنه عنده كوفيد 19 لكن التحليل أثبتت لاكس وصار في diagnosis of pneumonia إنه المريض عنده التهاب رئوي. فراح نكود النيمونيا. راح نكود كود ثاني اللي هو contact with exposure uh, and exposure to other communicants communicable disease, and the patient can end the contact with someone who was COVID-19. We're going to code the observation code, as we said earlier in the question. And we will code the emergency use, or the third code for emergency use, U06.0, to identify that he was COVID-19 suspected, but ruled out. And of course, the isolation code, because the patient was isolated. So the other case study, this was a COPD patient. He was admitted with severe cough and SOP, okay? She was afraid that she was infected due to lack of hygiene and especially after chopping. She was suspected to have infective exacerbation of her COPD due to COVID-19. She was commenced on CPAP ventilation via face mask for 30 hours. 
her lab results came negative and she was uh, received and she received treatment and for five days including physiotherapy so when having marina can and the COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease طبعا كان مشكوك ان هي عندها كوفيد 19 بسبب lack of hygiene وتنومت في المستشفى وصار لها ventilation وصار لها physiotherapy لكن في الاخير اكتشفوا ان اللاب اللاب ريزلتس طلعت نيجاتيف وفي هذه الحاله راح نكود الكيس او الكونديشن اللي تنومت فيها المريضه اللي هي chronic obstructive pulmonary disease with acute low respiratory tract infection and we will code the Z code for observation Z03.8 and also we will add the emergency code U07.0 and of course the procedures which is the ventilation the mechanical ventilation and the physiotherapy so the mostly the difference is the U code and as we can see that from one case study to, to the other different coding and different type of coding depends on why the patient was admitted and whether if he has symptoms or signs or conditions or whether if he was lab confirmed or clinically diagnosed. So what if the patient was admitted with no symptoms, so he would be admitted for screening and lab results came negative and there was no diagnosis of COVID-19. Okay, so this case study will reveal a 30 years old patient came to hospital with no symptoms after a family gathering, including his sister who was diagnosed later with COVID-19. He was admitted until his lab investigation came negative. Okay, so he was admitted with a suspected COVID-19, but it's ruled out. symptoms, signs, Z code who contact with other communicable disease because he was in contact with his sister who was COVID-19 positive and we will code the U-code, U06.0. But here the presentation was self-mandated on the patient here who came to the hospital. Another case of self-presentation, a 60 years old man with history of COPD and ex-smoking came to hospital with no symptoms, as he mentioned, that he is anxious and suspicious of having COVID-19. He started washing his hands repeatedly, even without touching a thing, especially after watching the news a lot lately, presenting the maximum risk for old people and those who has chronic condition. He was admitted until his lab investigations came back negative and discharged home. So this is just a patient who was anxious he was afraid to, of having COVID-19 because he's old and he has chronic conditions. And he has been watching the news all, of, all, all the day. So he came and self-presented himself to, to, to find out whether if he has COVID-19 or not. In this case, we use another one, which is Z71.1, person with fear compliant in whom no diagnosis was made. And we will use also U06.0. طبعا هنا المريض ما كان عنده أعراض ما كان عنده أي contact مع شخص عنده COVID-19 فما نقدر نستخدم كود ال contact اللي هو Z20. و ففي هذه الحالة راح نستخدم هذا الكود Z71.1 اللي هو personal fear compliant. And of course the U06.0 rolled out. The other case study is for a 27 years old lady who was brought to hospital by authority for mandating screening. So this is mandated screening and uh, by authority. So she recently came from Italy after being strapped after the crisis. She was admitted and her lab investigation came back negative. طبعا هنا اذا كانت المريضة دخلت لكن مو بارادتها او دخلت عن طريق السلطات عشان يكشف عنها انه عندها كوفيد 19 او لا. طبعا راح يكون البرنسبل دايجنوس اللي هو سبيشال سكريننج اكزامينيشن اوف فايرال ديزيز ذا 11.5 بيكوز ات واز ذا برنسبل دايجنوس شي واز ادميتد فور سكريننج اند ذن يوز يو ذن يوز يو 6.0 فور ذا رول اوت فمثل ما احنا شايفين انه الكيس ستاديز تختلف بناء على ليش دخل المريض وبناء على حالته uh, The last case studies, 
What if the same, the same lady from the previous case study was pregnant? Okay. If you remember, we used the O code on the first case study. If the patient had symptoms and signs and co confirmed COVID-19, but now she doesn't have signs, she doesn't have symptoms, and she was admitted for screening, which was negative. Okay. So the, the principal code will be the Z11.5 for the screening, and then U06.0 for emergency use, and then we will code the pregnant state, Z33, because the patient didn't have any complication. Uh, now, this is a, a very good schedule uh, from uh, IPA, IHPA. They produced this schedule as uh, further guidelines on how to code COVID-19 patients, depending on the patient if he had uh, exhibiting symptoms, exposure, if he has exposure to the virus, if he doesn't have symptoms, and in each case, how to code it or how to properly code it. So I would uh, like you to screenshot it if you're interested in it, because it will make it easier for you to code COVID-19 patients. And this is the other part of the schedule for the mandated screening and for the com pregnancy complicated by COVID-19. Now we are done with the, part, the coding part. And as we said, the coding part has been uh, various from one case to the other, okay? What can help us as a coder is the CDI or the clinical documentation improvement. Uh, طبعا the CDI or clinical documentation improvement or تحسين التوثيق السريري it has been described as the process of improving health records انه كيف نحسن الدوكيومنتيشن او التوثيق الطبي في الملفات الطبيه او في السجلات الطبيه طبعا تحسين السجلات الطبيه راح يعود فائده على الاوتكمز والداتا كواليتي والريمبيرسمنت طبعا زي ما تكلم اخونا عبد الرحمن كمان على السيرفيلانس كيف نقدر نراقب الامراض ونحاصرها؟ كيف نقدر ان يكون البيشنت ان السي دي اي بتساعدنا على الكونتينيوتي اوف كير اند كوميونيكيشن بين ذا هيلث كير بروفايدرز وطبعا احنا بالنسبه لنا ككودرز السي دي اي جدا مهم لانه واتس نوت دوكيومنتد از نوت دان سو ذير از سمثينج كولد سي دي اي تمبلتس فور امبروفمنت اوف ذا دوكيومنتيشن The CDI template, templates هذه بتضع معايير للدوكيومنتيشن في كل الحالات. طبعا احنا راح يكون تركيزنا على الكوفيد 19 انه ايش هي المعايير المطلوبه او الدوكيومنتيشن المطلوبه بالنسبه للكوفيد 19 سواء من الاطباء او من النيرسنج او من الهيلث كير بروفايدرز. فمثل ما قلنا CDI uh, والكودينج يعني uh, they complete each other. And one of the issues that we face as a coder is poor documentation. Uh, and as we discussed before that different case studies or different documentation will, effect, will, be, will have uh, effect on the coding as per the documentation, of course. So in order to completely uh, document a COVID-19 case. Uh, this is from AHIMA CDI templates. Okay, so in order to improve the documentation of COVID-19, the following should be clearly documented. Okay, so the, in the diagnosis, we should have, uh, it should be written clearly that the patient was ruled in or ruled out. And if it was ruled in, was it whether it was a lab results or clinical finding? Or when it's ruled out, it should be clearly documented. Also, when it's a probable diagnosis or suspected diagnosis. طبعا أول جزء خاص بالدوكيومنتيشن أو بالتوثيق هو الدايجنوزيس أو التشخيص الطبي للمريض. لازم يكون التشخيص هذا موثق وموثق بلاب ريزلت إذا كان إذا كان هو التشخيص تم عن طريق اللاب ريزلت أو إذا كان عن طريق الكلينيكال فايندينج كمان يكون موثق وكمان في حالة إذا كان رولد أوت كل هذا يكون موثق. The manifestation associated with COVID-19. طبعاً إحنا تكلمنا عن الكوفيد-19 إنه 
يسبب مانيفستيشنز او يسبب امراض اخرى مثل النيمونيا والبرونكايتس اند اذر مانيفستيشنز لازم تكون هذه المانيفستيشن موثقه او مكتوبه بشكل واضح سواء كانت ريسبيراتوري مانيفستيشن او جاسترو انترولوجي مانيفستيشن او اذر مانيفستيشنز كوزد باي كوفيد 19 طبعا الساينز والسيمتومز شيء جدا مهم انها تكون موثقه من ضمن ال كوفيد 19 patients مثل الكف فيفر سوت روت او اغلب الساينز والسيمتومز اللي تكلمنا عنها طبعا في شيء كمان اللي هو الريسك فاكتورز طبعا اذا كان مريض مع ديابيتس او سكر او هايبرتنشن راح يكون التاثير عليه في الكوفيد 19 اكثر من اي مريض عادي او اني هيلثي بيشنت السموكينج اسما سو اني ريسك فاكتور ات شود بي دوكيومنتد Some of the physicians will neglect a fact like smoking. He will, he will not document that the patient is a smoker. Uh, and smoking, it, will, it can, be, can affect a patient with COVID-19 if he was a heavy smoker. And recent travel or recent contact with carrier. These, documents, these documentations help other healthcare professionals and help coders in, in having the right code. Uh, Also, what should be clearly documented is the treatment, whether the patient had mechanical ventilator, IV fluids, antibiotic or, or antiviral, isolation, whether if the patient was isolated or not, sepsis workout, and other related treatment. Uh, here's our references, and I'm so sorry for taking so much time, uh, but I think it was a very important subject and needed to be covered. Uh, so, Uh, for any coding queries, please contact uh, Shima at, at schfs.org. Or this is my personal email. So for any queries or coding queries, just contact us. Uh, and now I think we will have the Q&A. السلام عليكم استاذ ناصر يبدو لي كثير من الكيو ان اي كانت عن الكودينج انكويريز واتوقع ان اغلبها انت اجبت عنها في خلال نفس السلايدات لانه لانه بعض بعض الاسئله طرحت قبل توصل الاجابه فاحنا عندنا بعد جايد لاين مفصل ممكن تشوفونه على موقع موقع الجمعيه في على تويتر او على لينكدين وفيها فيه ان شاء الله التفاصيل حق الكودينج بالنسبه للكوفيد 19 وبنحاول ان نسوي له ابديت وانس انه اي اي ابديت حصل باستمرار وزي ما تفضل الاخ ناصر ايميلات الجمعيه متاحه لكم لاي اسئله تفصيليه بعض الاسئله كانت كلينيكال او غير على يعني بيوند ذا سكوب اوف ذيس ليكشر احد الاسئله اللي مر علي وكان فيزيشن يسال يقول فور اس از فيزيشن دو وي نيد تو نو ذا كودينج فاتوقع فور يو از فيزيشن اتس وات كونسيرن يو ذا موست از ذا كلينيكال دوكيومنتيشن والكلينيكال دوكيومنتيشن هو يبنى يبنى عليها الكودينج فاتوقع انه مهم لك تعرف طبيعه الكودينج لتعرف صياغه الكلينيكال دوكيومنتيشن استاذ ناصر تحب تضيف اي شيء بال بالكيو ان اي سواء هذا او الكيو ان اي بشكل عام Uh, انا احب اضيف بالنسبه للفيزيشنز طبعا اذا كان عارف انه ايش هي الدوكيومنتيشن المطلوبه في التوثيق او ايش هي الدوكيومنتيشن المطلوبه في التبليغ uh, هذا الشيء راح يكون مفيد للسرفيلرز مفيد للكودرز انه بيكون الطبيب عارف هو ايش المفروض يكتب في هذا الكيس او في هذه الحاله uh, طبعا كان في سؤال عن الاميونو كومبرومايز النس اند Uh, does it have specific uh, code for like a pregnancy? طبعا احنا تكلمنا عن pregnancy وكيف انه ممكن نكود pregnancy او انه اذا كانت ال patient pregnant بيكون ال coding حقها مختلف من pregnant من uh, من ال patient العادي كمان ممكن يكون المريض immunocompromised because of other things because of uh, uh, immunosuppressant medications or sometimes uh, maybe he will be an AIDS patient or HIV patient uh, And this also have uh, the guidelines for them, specific guidelines and, and the ACS on the standard. For uh, the guidelines for COVID-19, 
آه انا حاولت اغطي كل السيناريوز الموجوده او كل السيناريوز المتوقعه آه وطبعا ككودر او لازم احنا ككودرز لازم دائما نرجع للستاندردز ونرجع للابديتس ونرجع للكلينيكال ابديتس فاتمنى اني اكون غطيت موست موست اوف ذا سيناريوز يعني آه شكرا لك اخ ناصر uh, بالنسبه للبول السؤال اللي جاكم في البدايه uh, the question that you you faced at the beginning when you first entered uh, the session uh, the question goes as follows which of the following surveillance is collected throughout patient uh, the correct answer is a uh, is the enter ones like symptoms uh, as i explained in the lecture the second one the the uh, the theory the severe acute, acute respiratory infectious surveillance or the other one the central surveillance is mostly through the inpatient or the hospitalized patient. Uh, uh, I, I, uh, so the, the, moderator, uh, the moderator, do you have anything to add or anything before we conclude the session? Dr. Wasim, or Dr. Wasim, عفواً. السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله سمعت اسمك يعني لا اقول لك احنا عن عن نفسنا اتوقع وي كونكلود ذس برزنتيشن وفي بعض الاسئله ممكن احنا نجاوبها تفضلوا تفضلوا ناخذ 3 4 questions كذا ولا 5 questions and then we can conclude الله يعطيكم العافيه جميعا باذن الله طبعا احنا بالنسبه للاسئله الميديكال او الطبيه المفروض انها تتوجه للميديكال براكتشنرز احنا السبجكت حقنا حقنا عن الكودينج والدوكيومنتيشن والسرفيلنس فاحنا اسفين انه ما نقدر نجاوب عن الاسئله الخاصه بالميديكيشن او الاسئله الخاصه باللقاحات جميل طيب استاذ ناصر في سؤال هنا يقول هاو دو وي ديل وذ ملتيبل فورمز Uh, multiple form of virus while collecting information and does it affect the procedure resulting from a result of the collecting information more accurately فما اتوقع ما ادري انا قصدي اذا يعني طلعت multiple forms يعني قصدي different result I think اعتقد ممكن انه يقصد انه كان المريض عنده مثلا الفيروس وكان عنده كمان another infection مثلا بكتيريا اتوقع ممكن يكون هذا السؤال Uh, طبعا اذا كان المريض uh, admitted with COVID-19 او اكتشفوا في الريزلت ان البيشنت كان COVID-19 وفي نفس الوقت اخر اكتشفوا كمان another bacteria اوكي okay. في هذه الحاله uh, we should always get back to the clinician to see which which organism was responsible for the case اوكي okay. لانه هذا راح يختلف معانا في, في مساله البرنسبل دايجنوزيس تمام Uh, ممكن يكون الكوفيد 19 كان هو سبب في الاعراض وممكن يكون مثلا البكتيريا كانت هي سبب في الاعراض ممكن المريض يكون مثلا مع كوفيد 19 and he was admitted for bacterial pneumonia okay of course the covid 19 will make the case worse that uh, we should get back to the clinician to see which was the principal diagnosis or which was which which has the most effect of the patient وغالبا راح يكون كورونا او كوفيد 19 بس في هذه الحاله لازم نرجع للطبيب. طبعا عندي السؤال الثاني من دكتور دكتور نجيب. Uh, what are the set of codes of international codes used to code the medical investigation to achieve the accurate collection of data? I think I think he was referring to the coding standard. Uh, if that's if that's what he means. Uh, so so the ICD code we currently use is the It's called the ICD-10 AM, which is the International Classification of Disease, the Australian version. It's, it's, that's, if that's your question, let us know if, if we answered correctly. Um, but, uh, but if, the lab, if the laboratory diagnosis is investigate, no symptoms, do we need to isolate the patient for 14 days to roll out the COVID-19? Uh, I think this is... This is not within the scope of our presentation. Yeah, this is a clinical question. Uh, I'm trying to find some questions regarding coding.
uh, how do we guide the physicians for co proper COVID documentation? Uh, I think we should, uh, I think we should, uh, you know, uh, publish more, uh, publish more uh, about uh, clinical documentation improvement and we should aware the people or aware the physicians about the, the importance of the COVID-19 documentation because the proper documentation lead to, uh, leads to proper coding, leads to proper decision making and leads to proper uh, uh, prevention of the spread of the virus. So if they know the importance of the clinical documentation improvement, I think they would, uh, they would um, pay attention for that. جميل طيب هنا سؤال يقول لك متى متى تعطي الكودينج لحاله من يوم الحضور للطوارئ واذا حصل اي تغيير على على الاعراض هل يتم تغيير الاكواد لاحقا؟ ما فهمت ما سمعتك يقول لك متى تعطي الكودينج لحاله من يوم الحضور للطوارئ واذا حصل تغيير على الاعراض هل يتم تغيير الاكواد لاحقا؟ هو الكودينج الكودينج اتس ا بروسيس الكودينج عمليا انه مكود نكود الابيسود حقت البيشنت كامله من اول ما جاء طوارئ لين ما طلع من المستشفى لكن احنا طبعا بنتكلم عن كودينج الامبيشنت فراح نتكلم انه من اول ما جاء الطوارئ راح يكون بيكون عنده بروفيجنال دايجنوزيس بعد البروفيجنال دايجنوز بيكون في لاب انفستيجيشنز وفي فالكودينج حقنا دائما بيكون افتر افتر استابلشمنت اوف ذا دايجنوز او بعد ما يخرج المريض وبعد ما يخرج المريض بيكون البيشنت تعرض للبروفيجنال دايجنوزيس واللاب انفستيجيشنز والطبيب في الاخير كتب لنا ايش هو الفاينل دايجنوزيس والفاينل دايجنوزيس هذا كان بناء على اللاب ريزلتس او بناء على الكلينيكال فايندينج طيب هنا هنا احنا بنكود الابيسود كامل جميل هنا سؤال اتوقع مشابه هاو دو وي كود لايك هاو اباوت بيشنت هو واز ادميتد از ا سسبكتد كيس اوف كوفيد 19 اند تيرن اوت تو بي سارس اور ميرس Uh, he will be coded as the guidelines for SARS and MERS. It's a little bit, it's basically the same, but without the U codes for COVID-19. Yeah. Because as you said, the coronavirus is a large family and this novel coronavirus is a new species. But uh, the U codes that recently were advised to use by WHO uh, mm -hmm. was specifically for COVID-19. So he will code this, the case as the same coding, but without the U codes. Or he will use the codes for SARS, not for the COVID-19. Because there are codes, U codes for SARS. طيب هنا واحد يسأل عن ال comorbidities. هل ممكن إضافة كود للمريض المزمن سكري مدخن غسيل غسيل كلا إلى كود المصنف بالكورونا؟ أكيد أكيد. إحنا طبعاً ال comorbidities تعتبر عامل رئيسي إذا كان ال patient إذا كان ال patient مؤمن بال COVID-19. والكومربيتيز زي ما قلنا انه المريض اللي معاه كرونيك كونديشنز ما بيتعامل زي المريض اللي هيلثي بيشنت فطبعا في حاله اذا كان البيشنت عنده كومربيتيز او كرونيك كونديشنز راح نرجع لقاعده الاديشنال دايجنوزيس في قاعده اللي هي الاس اي اس 0002 هل هل الكرونيك كونديشن هذا اثر على التنويم هل الكرونيك كونديشنز هذا هاف مور كير اور هاد مور كير اور ديد وي تشينج ذا يوز اوف ميديكيشن Or uh, did we use any more investigations to? Uh, did we use any more resources from the hospital for this chronic condition? So, if we had to can to tabaq alay the criteria for the additional diagnosis, of course we will call it. So, so I can chronic condition, for example, the COPD, for example, or hypertension or diabetes. Of course, all that will return to the rules for the coding. طيب اتوقع احنا اخذنا من من وقتهم كثير الله يجزاهم خير وكان كانوا صبورين علينا الله يبارك فيهم و والاخوه الحضور بعد طولنا عليكم الله يجزاكم خير الله يعطيكم العافيه جميعا يعطيكم العافيه ناصر يعطيكم العافيه على الصباح الجميله اتوقع احنا ممكن ممكن ننهيها هنا وان شاء الله حيكون تواصل بيننا على 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 وسائل التواصل الجمعيه وحيكون لنا باذن الله انشطه مستقبليه وحنقدر نتفاعل معاكم بشكل ان شاء الله باذن الله الله يعطيكم العافيه شكرا لك دكتور دكتور وسام اسمعني ايوه تفضل دكتور الله يديكم الصحه والعافيه الله يبارك فيك عزيزي اتوقع احنا يعني 
اخذنا من وقتهم الكفي ما يكفي حاليا فممكن احنا ننهيها في ال... ننهيها عند الله يديكم الصحه والعافيه وشكرا على الفيري فاليبل ليكشر هذه الله يكتب اجركم و الف شكر للاخوان لجميع الاخوان والاخوات الحاضرين على التفاعل الرائع والاسئله الجميله اللي حطوها وان شاء الله ربنا يكتب اجر الجميع يا رب وان شاء الله نخرج من الجائحه دي على خير يا رب العالمين. امين يا رب الله يعطيك العافيه الله يوفقكم جميعا الله يوفقكم شكرا لحضوركم الله يكرمكم. مع السلامه.